Cat Gen 8. I guess you'd uh, consider this one a first generation Gen 8 when the first ones that came out were either orange or blue. Brought it over for a little bit of work with some ideas of uh, things that we could do to it. I'm not sure that we're going to be able to get them done. But I just thought the truck was, was cool enough to put up a, a standalone video about it since it's in really good shape. Now there's some key parts to it that are missing that came on it originally. Uh, like underneath the doors is where the sliders uh, when the truck was new would come out and the body here, the edge of the body would sit down and a crease on those sliders. Well the sliders are gone, but it doesn't change the fact that it's still a really super cool rig. Let me just usual this thing was bought used and whoever had it did a decent job of taking care of it now there's a lot of Traxxas parts that's been thrown at this such as the tires the tires are off of a TRX4 and it also has a 550 size Titan Traxxas motor yeah I believe the ESC may be original I'm not sure I haven't opened the receiver box, but I know it's running a Traxxas radio as well. And so the other thing that's been upgraded is the steering servo. Uh, it's, it's, to me, it's a little underpowered, but it's still better than what came on it originally. Now he did, whoever had it before him, put a decent stinger on it. It's a steel stinger. And so I had to reattach the stinger. It's got a shock set up. Kind of like those desert lizard shocks, although I can't find a name on them. The cool thing about these trucks when they were released is this is, I had one when they came out and it was the first one I ever had that had portal axles underneath it. And I was on the fence about portals, but it made me a believer of the performance that they could offer. I mean, mine, the only bad thing that happened with mine, the first thing that went was a motor. I believe it was a 55 turn motor that came in at stock was the first thing that went the second thing that went was the servo and so i don't want to say that they were subpar parts but i did put mine in some really hairy situations and beat the literal crap out of it the thing that i liked about mine is the way that they had cross braced the shock towers and then on top of that all of the shock mountain positions that the shock towers had it was, a, it was a step up from anything I had at the time. And a lot of people that I know, I'm not going to say across the board, but a lot of people that I know just didn't want to give the Gen 8 a, uh, give it a chance. But I bought one kind of secretively and didn't tell anybody until I just finally said, you know what, this is a decent rig. And I took it to a get together and you know, everybody's like, oh man, it's a piece of junk, this, that, and the other. And then whenever you get out there and you turn it on and show them what the thing's capable of, um, not that it's some, you know, ass kicker out of the box, but it was a lot better than people had thought it was going to be. You know, it started to change some minds. Now, on this particular rig, another thing that <laughs> that was done before it was purchased is the battery tray, as you can see, has basically been sawed in half. And I guess that whoever had it must have been running a shorty pack. And <laughs> I, I don't know why in the world they would have and cut the rest of the battery tray off, but half of it is missing. Oh, God. The other thing I did like about the Gen 8 was the detail on the body and the way the body was mounted because it came from the factory on Velcro. Now, you got two of the original pieces up front. I guess it's original. And then two on the back are, are gone but they're still attached to the body itself, but easy to fix, easy to get it to where it stay, you know, where it needs to be sort of hold the body and, you know, keep it from bouncing around on the trails. But the other thing was that for the price point, when you bought the truck, I think I paid $339 for my new came with all of that stuff and inner fenders and floor and, uh, inner fenders. And I guess we'll call them floor pans, but I know it's all one molded piece. And, uh, just for the money at the time, man, you just couldn't beat it. It was just a, I don't want to call it a game changer or anything like that, but it was, it was a step up to me from an original SCX 10 one. 
that didn't offer any of this. Doesn't need a lot of work. We're going to go through and kind of nut and bolt it, tighten everything up. Um, we were going to try to do something with the chassis. We're not going to be able to do anything as far as that goes. And honestly, as, as tough as this truck is, I don't want to ruin it. And I think by doing what we had originally planned, we would do just that. So I'm just going to clean this thing up for him, get it, get everything tight, make sure everything's in order, slap the body back on it. The tires are not factory. Um, what are they? Canyon Trail 1.9s. Good tire. I think the tires that came on this truck originally were a better piece, but these do suit it very well. The four link is there. Uh, it's a great four link setup. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the drive shafts are original, but don't hold me to it. But either way, good drive shafts in there. And again, those portals. And it's so easy to overdrive these front axles uh, as far as portals go. I've not really dove in it deep enough to, to see if it is overdriven on the front. Three link with a pan hard bar up front. These trucks, to me, are severely underrated and underappreciated. The biggest cool factor of the whole Gen 8 chassis, Gen 8 platform, is the body. Red Cat nailed it with this body. Now, it's a, it's a big one. It's a damn big body. The only thing I wish that they had done is I wish that they had not used decals for the windows. And there's a way to pull those decals off and, you know, and, and release the, the paint on the backside and clear them out. But to me, it's just a lot of work. And, and then I feel like in a way, it just, you kind of ruin the integrity of the body and the paint and whatnot. So if you're fortunate enough to where you could find another clear body and paint it with the decal kit and whatnot, then you could do it up and do it right. Now, the decals were on it when he got it. Uh, if they stay fine, once them are taken off to bring it back to its original state, that's an easy process too. Headlight buckets came stock. This one does not have LEDs in it. Super easy to put them in there. The fender flares are okay. The rear flare is, is awesome. The front flare just has a weird arch right here. And what I did with mine originally is took my Dremel and pulled it cut or shaved it to where it actually followed the, the outside line and took this weird radius out of it. But there's really nothing wrong with it. It doesn't inhibit it flexing or anything like that. Uh, fold away mirrors on this one, which is a cool, uh, a cool add on. There's light buckets for rear tail lights. And <laughs> it's actually got a receiver cover. How about that? But Red Cat kind of nailed it on this. Super cool when he brought it in for a little bit of work. Yeah, with the idea, idea that he had. Um, I was actually astonished that he got it. And for what he paid for it, <laughs> I'd give him double his money tomorrow. <laughs> Let's put it that way. He got a really good deal on it. And uh, I'm glad it's here. Glad I got a chance to, uh, to mess with another one. Yes, sir. First generation Red Cat Gen 8. Or as far as Gump might say, Gen 8. <laughs> Hope you guys have had a great weekend. Enjoy your Sunday. Get outside and build something if you can. Get outside and run something if you can. But do be safe if you're in the southeast portion of the country because it's unbelievably hot. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.